Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. This video is in response mainly to a comment by Monkey that said, and I quote, strap a Buran to a super heavy with two Falcon 9 side boosters, fully reusable with KOS. I don't know, is there enough Delta V? Well, uh, this was an intriguing question. I decided uh, for reasons that I will explain. Uh, first of all, the two Falcon 9 side boosters are completely irrelevant. <laughs> they, they will not do anything useful. Uh, the, the sheer power of... I mean, there's 37 of these Raptor engines at the bottom, and uh, each Falcon 9 would represent maybe three of these engines. So it's not a huge amount of extra boost when you get down to it. Uh, and that gets to the point. The point is, I don't think people understand the scale of Starship and Super Heavy. And uh, this is one video that I'll do that will sort of elaborate on that, and then there'll be another video after this, uh, which will basically focus on just trying to assess the um, no reusability uh, payload capacity of the system, right? So just uh, take off the top, put a regular payload fairing on it, and see how much it can carry if it was not reusable. So that's a separate thing. Now I'm not going to try and do fully reusable with KOS right now because I'm still in the process of working that out. Um, I've made some steps, but uh, yeah, there's still a lot to be done here. So the question is, strap a Buran to a Super Heavy. Um, well, I, I don't want to strap a Buran to Super Heavy because Super Heavy won't be able to come back, really. Uh, now. Maybe the idea was to strap a Buran plus an Energia to Super Heavy. Um, that's a possibility, though that's probably not the most interesting configuration. Uh, what I wanted to do was just strap a shuttle to the side of Starship. Now, why am I picking the shuttle instead of Buran? Well, first of all, the last usable Buran hasn't been updated for ages. Second of all, if I can do it for shuttle, Buran would be easier because Buran is lighter than the shuttle by quite a lot. So uh, this will demonstrate that it could be done with both. Uh, if I just did it with Buran, it wouldn't say necessarily that the shuttle was doable. Now, what are the problems with this? Well, the payload capacity is not a problem. The entire shuttle weighs less than the payload capacity of Starship. Starship can carry, what we've already tested this, can carry 100, and, uh, 100 tons to orbit and still leaving enough fuel in Super Heavy to land. So payload capacity is not a problem. The problem is the aerodynamics and the balance, right? So if we take off Super Heavy, we see the thrust vector and the center of mass, and this doesn't look good. But we'll see what happens, but we're expecting it not to be good. Now the center of mass and center of lift is actually not too bad here. Uh, if we add Super Heavy, we'll see how it is. I mean, Super Heavy, the center of mass is down here, and the center of the lift is all the way up here. So, yeah. Now, I've put uh, the shuttle a little bit far forward uh, in order to bring the center of mass up. Of course, if we moved it down, that would help with the center of lift, so it's sort of a trade-off. Now, this is uh, it with uh, the um, Starship empty, of course. We would be most interested to see what this balance is with Starship empty. Uh, when Starship is full, Star Starship is so heavy that the shuttle's mass doesn't matter at all. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, the Starship is way, way, way heavy uh, in order to allow for the space shuttle to be its payload, right? So, and this gets to how big Starship really is. Let us try this. Now that I've fully fueled it, hopefully that's on the right node, and see what happens and adjust accordingly. Now there are a few things we could do. For instance, we could light one of the shuttle's engines and put some fuel uh, for it in the cargo bay, right? Now the cargo bay, oh, I better take this out. This is the 100 ton payload we were testing with. We don't want that in here right now. Uh, but we could uh, fill that space with uh, Hydrolox and use that to fuel the shuttle. Uh, we might want to tilt the shuttle a little bit. It seems like it's a little bit, maybe something a little bit more, ooh, like that. I really want to shift it down. 
but we'll see how the balance is right now. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Throttle up, SAS is on. And actually, one point before we start. So, if we did use the Energia core with its four engines on here with Buran, that would work out. I think Energia core would deliver enough Delta V so that Super Heavy would be able to return. So, we're just talking about Delta V wise. And uh, same with the shuttle and the external tank. And of course, the balance would be fine because both of those configurations uh, are built so that they would be balanced. Um, Delta, uh, but of course, both the external tank and the energy core would have to be underfueled somewhat in order to have enough thrust to weight ratio at that point, right? Because normally they'd have the boosters on the side, but we wouldn't want the boosters in this case. They are the energy core is 8.4 meters, so it's a pretty good fit for uh, the Starship diameter, which is 9 meters. So it's about the same size, and so overall, it'd probably be a pretty easy replacement. Of course, it's hydrolock, so mass-wise, it's very light compared to uh, Starship. So it wouldn't cause a huge burden for Super Heavy because, uh, you know, all the hydrogen is not very heavy. So anyway, throttle up, SAS is on. And here we go, ignition. Oh, did I? Oh. It looks like I accidentally lit the uh, space shuttle's engines, but they're run, gonna run out. They're they're out. <laughs> so okay, they're. Let's just shut them down. They used uh, that liquid hydrogen was for the fuel cells. So unfortunately, we'll not have the fuel cell liquid hydrogen, but it's not much mass. It won't make too much of a difference. As before, I'm going to aim to save at least 10% of Starship's fuel. I don't know what kind of Delta V reading we're getting there. Uh, do I have a staging mistake or something? Because, like, we probably shouldn't have that. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it read something there. Okay, that's the core going off. And those are the engines there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe it thinks. I think it thinks that we're gonna drop off the space shuttle for some reason. I, I don't think it's including the space shuttle's mass. That's why it has so much delta v. Um, but this is the decoupler for the space shuttle, right? Yeah, I think so. So I don't know why it thinks that. As far as balance goes, of course, it's close to the end. That's the critical part. That's when the fuel is mostly empty from Starship, but the shuttle's aerodynamic surfaces will cause a problem potentially as we're passing the speed of sound, if they're gonna cause a problem at all. It is interesting to compare the sheer size of Starship's fins compared to the shuttle's wings. That's quite a thing, isn't it? The empty mass of Starship is not too much heavier than the empty mass of the shuttle. At least the advertised empty mass of Starship, which is about 120 tons or so. The shuttle was about 80 tons, 75, it depends on whether you include the engines. We are carrying the engines. We are also carrying the OMS fuel for the shuttle, so the OMS pods are fully fueled. The fact that it's not reading the Delta V right is frustrating, because I definitely don't know exactly what's going on with that. But again, we're under the payload limit for Starship to low Earth orbit. So we've got that going for us. Downside is we are catching extra drag here. But it looks like we passed the speed of sound without any fanfare, no wigglies, nothing. Seems very well balanced, I don't see much use of control authority at all. Okay, so 10% would be 18 seconds of stage time here. I think I'll just shut it there, separation, throttle up.
I don't know whether they would like fold the fins up or whether they would stop them actuating. The shuttle's control surface is actuated during launch to relieve some of the stress on the vehicle. So the computer managed all that. And it's still not telling me how much Delta V I actually have. Got plenty of time to apoapsis. But uh, actually, I'm not gonna... I, I want to see this. You can see the pitch authority being used because it's trying to balance itself now. That'll eventually get worse and worse. And we'll see how bad it gets. I'll tell you when this combination would weigh as much as the shuttle with the external tank. A fully fueled external tank. We're not there yet. Okay, we're getting to around shuttle plus fully fueled external tank levels right now, five and a half minutes into the launch. On the pad, of course, uh, Super Heavy plus Starship uh, plus whatever Starship's payload happens to be weigh about two and a half times the shuttle stack. And when you think about it, that makes sense, because uh, if you include Starship's body plus the payload, that's about two and a half times what uh, ends up going into lower orbit with the shuttle. So... I mean, well, two times, but we're using methane and oxygen, so it's not as efficient. But then again, the shuttle had SRBs, so maybe it evens out a little bit. We're about using half of our pitch authority here. I'll probably activate all the RCS first to see if they can hold it. I doubt that the RCS is not that powerful, but we'll give them a shot first. I think it's actually showing us the proper Delta V now, or something close to it. After I move that RCS down. Okay, uh, activate the RCS. Yeah, it's not doing that much. Uh, I wonder what would happen if I shut off the opposite side vacuum engines. They don't throw. Uh, they don't uh, gimbal as much after all. Okay, let's tilt down. So we've just got the three center engines and this vacuum engine. Crawling down a bit. Balance is tenuous, but I think we can make it. That's orbit, 216 by 153. Got 344 meters per second left, not including the shuttle's OMS. And yeah, 231 tons altogether in orbit. And yep, they can carry the shuttle just fine. <laughs> Didn't even need to put uh, hydro locks in to fire up the one of the SSMEs in order to maintain balance. We just needed to shut off the two opposite side vacuum engines and that did the trick. So, question answered. And yeah, Starship is big. <laughs> I mean, really, really big. And so super heavy. That's why I came up with the alternate lunar lander, because, you know, I felt landing this whole thing was... It's big. <laughs> it's big. Uh, I don't think people appreciate how big a payload capacity of 50 tons to the lunar surface is, but we're not the most set up to actually make use of that. But anyway, that's not here nor there. This was the point. And there you have it. Oh, uh, I guess we could separate off the shuttle and make sure it does shuttle-y things. It doesn't have its fuel cells though, so electric charge wise it's gonna be busts. Oh, we don't have any crew on board. And I can't EVA from the pod, I don't think that works right now. Alright, yeah, things I have to still fix. A little list there. Alright, and yeah, I, I've i added the, um, what should we call it, COM offset, the descent mode, so that we can move the center of mass. And try to do the landings and I I 
did that i uh, did a test during stream and it sort of flipped out but then eventually went tail first and i was able to light the engines and we were over water so it was one of those kinds of tests so yeah but and there's a segment of the descent path where it sort of wants to lose control and then it regains control when and starts going tail first if you turn on descent mode so not ideal right now but that's the situation as far as trying to get it to be properly recoverable right now so anyway with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time